Welcome on in everybody, Tobin here with you. Thanks for checking out the channel. Hope everybody's doing fantastic out there. As uh, we round out this week, we go into a new month. And uh, about a month away from, you know, all the drama that will drub up with the Miami Heat. I imagine it'll be a f big fodder month. <clears throat> and then actual decisions will get in, a new, um, in July with the whole situation. Uh, unfortunately... We have a finals that was involving that's involving the Dallas Mavericks and the Boston Celtics. And if you were to talk about you know the two teams from each conference that Miami Heat fans arguably hate the most, hard pressed to say that you would find any other answer. Maybe you'll have some older Heat fans saying Knicks, and I would totally respect that answer. Uh, I think I could probably even maybe stomach Celtics over Knicks. In a in a in just a doomsday scenario, um, but in the West, eh, you wanted to find couldn't find many teams that I would want to win less than Mark Cuban's Dallas Mavericks. Happy for Derek Jones Jr. Of course, um, I like Luca. I like Luca. I enjoy watching Luca, even though he is a bit of a, a crybaby. I do. I do like Luca. Um, you know, you guys know on this. I was. Same for the Kyrie thing. I was like, I'm into it. Let's go on the cheap skis. But what are you going to do? It didn't happen. And the Heat made their stance on that. But uh, but look, in a, in, a, in a battle of Dallas versus Boston, the lesser of two evils is for sure Dallas winning over Boston. You know, Boston winning is just bleh. It's just, it's, it's. It's not even interesting either. It's just like, oh, great, Boston won. You know, maybe in that regard, it should just be like, you know what? Everybody kind of treats them as that anyway. So part of me is like, do do, do you, uh, you know, do you just root against Mark Cuban because people just treat Boston like that anyway? But I just, I don't want that city to win. So I, I am going to go and root for the Dallas Mavericks in my uh, petty power rankings. The Minnesota Timberwolves flamed out. So all of their Jimmy Butler receipts uh, and their odd obsession with Jimmy Butler, um, they do not come to fruition. Although, you know, thinking how this summer might have gone, it might have been one of those things where, hey, it might have not been the Heat's problem anymore. So what are you going to do? Didn't happen anyway. Anthony Edwards is not ready yet to take the mantle of Michael Jordan. And in uh, lockstep with that means he will not catch D Wade. So uh, a tough go of it right now for Ant-Man because, you know, on years, D Wade's already, you know, way past you on years in life. Okay. You can still uh, get to that mantle anyway. Um, so I'm going for the Mavericks. I, you know, can't imagine I'm going to be too engaged in the NBA finals. I mean, I'm going to watch it but i'm gonna be like you know if i have other better things to do on a certain night i might choose those better certain things to do on those given nights and uh you know plus hopefully the panthers will be in the stanley cup so that'd be a great distraction as long as they can close things out on saturday but uh to get to a couple pieces of discussion because there really isn't much heat news out there to be frank with you guys um chris quinn is going to get an interview, apparently, with the Cleveland Cavaliers. We hadn't heard much from uh, his fallout with the Lakers. That very much seems like it is going to go to J.J. Redick. And it does appear any pipe dreams that any Heat fan did have of LeBron James reuniting down with the Miami Heat, those seem shot into the sky now because it seems very much like you, Donis, have said, better chance of wrestling an alligator than LeBron leaving L.A., Today, their first round pick got activated by the New Orleans Pelicans. Might speculate they might take Bronny in the first round for LeBron James. It seems like they're going to take LeBron's podcast co-host as their head coach, and they're going to give LeBron James all the money that he wants. They're going to go out with LeBron very much like they went with Kobe. And, um, you know, the Lakers need star power, man. They do. The Lakers need star power, and they're, they're going to go in that direction. So it does feel very much like anybody who thought that a – LeBron return was on the checklist does not appear that is the case um could they get involved for Jimmy Butler a little bit later on I don't know but there is another Western Conference team that apparently is going to stick their beak in the Jimmy Butler business and that is the Golden State Warriors and this has become interesting because 
the Golden State Warriors are said that the Jimmy Butler business opens that they would like to inquire and, and see where Jimmy is. And this is where the Heat are going to be on an interesting point with Jimmy because I think the Heat really do have to be honest with themselves about Jimmy, about Bam, about the team going forward and what do they do because they've never they haven't done big winning with their young guys without Jimmy Butler and Jimmy Butler is no doubt the engine behind a lot of their elite winning though Bam's had a big part in it Jimmy's definitely as Pat Riley calls him the needle mover and there's not many of those guys around you know if you want to talk about who are the big swing guys in the league especially when it comes to performing in the playoffs I get into this argument with Leroy all the time because, you know, he tells me that the Heat don't have a bona fide score. And they don't. They don't have a regular season bona fide score. Jimmy's never scored 40 in a Heat jersey in a regular season game. But you see in this league how much guys are gunning to get those guys in the postseason. And there's no doubt about his talents when he gets to that. It's just from a Heat standpoint, you know, do they feel like it is going to eventually catch up from them have they gotten all of the best out of jimmy butler and there's no more magic there and is this the the time if there really is going to be all this interest and I, it's tough to know what's real and what's not real because look let's be frank about it jimmy butler's side of things wants to let it be known to the heat that he has that value so if there is anybody in the front office for the heat quibbling or wants to have a discussion about money he's letting you know their people are letting them the heat know hey there's a market out here for him that that would pay him that money um and it was interesting i was having this talk with uh anthony chang who was on the the radio show which i recommend you guys go check out the uh the interview anthony was great i love a lot of things going into this heat season regarding uh you know, the direction of the heat. And I'm going to play a clip here for you in a second for those who didn't, but I recommend you guys check it because we did, uh, we did about 20 minutes on, uh, on Jimmy and Bam as like kind of the big topics, maybe a, a little bit on Nikola Jovich being swole. Um, but it's interesting because, you know, I asked Anthony in his opinion, does he think that Jimmy Butler is going to make a stink? It's funny. You know, see the wolves in this thing and, Everybody remembers what he did with the uh, the Minnesota Timberwolves. Do you think that Jimmy Butler is going to make a stink? And uh, and in Anthony's guess and mine, the uh, the idea I think would be that Jimmy Butler is not going to cause chaos if the Heat don't pay him, but that there could be you know some kind of silent request from his side being like hey this this franchise wants to pay him this franchise wants to pay him send him so he can get paid and that there could be a a mutual understanding and that is the interesting part here for the Miami Heat is that if Jimmy wants his money and they're gonna balk at that does the does the Heat tell Jimmy Butler kick rocks play out your contract and we dare you to opt out of 50 million the next year <laughs> or um does Jimmy Butler come back just play out a contract being obviously very motivated because his ideas going into you know a year where he's going to be 35 probably you know the if you're talking prime 35 36 are going to be those last years because 37 is the one everybody's quibbling over right um that if he could have a monster year this year maybe he can potentially drive the engine to get a big two-year free agent deal or even bigger free agent deal after this year opting out with the Miami Heat so I don't know if Jimmy is necessarily going to be in a position to just burn the mother bleeper to the ground so then the question becomes all right do the Heat actually walk away from this thing do they make some fringe moves to you know almost pull a Boston or pull a Dallas they have their stars can they reconstruct around them to actually contend with this thing? Or they do not or, or do the Heat not believe that they can do that with Jimmy and Bam anymore? And is the is the idea to just go and hand the keys over to Bam out of bio and say, his franchise now, let's go get Donovan Mitchell down here and see what they can craft around. A little bit of that's out of their hands, right? Because you don't know. There was a report today that Cleveland may be not that keen. Who knows what to believe, but Cleveland may not be that keen to 
move off of Donovan Mitchell, uh, especially if they're hiring a new coach who is from the Heat and Chris Quinn. You know, Chris Quinn could give a wink to Colby Altman and say, you know, you do what you have to do with this. Uh, you know, just don't fire me after three weeks. And or Chris Quinn may be like, I'm not going to take that job. It's, it's like, uh, you know, I'm not taking that job if I know that the whole Donovan Mitchell has to go. And if Donovan Mitchell stays, Darius Garland has to go. I think you want to feel like you have a lot of that roster intact. So going to be an interesting thing. But this is uh, this was Anthony on the show this week talking about the Heat's pivot point. Yeah, I think that's part of it, right? Like th- this is this is the point where you could say we could pivot right now if we wanted to. Right. Like this is the decision. Do we extend the window and say we think this is enough to continue to compete for championships? And do we give Jimmy that extra year and make this like create this three year window with these guys and go all in? Um, but then then you're faced with restrictions with the new CBA. Right. Like already this year, you're probably not going to bring back Caleb Martin it, to make an addition. You're probably going to have to make a trade. All you have is minimum contracts to offer outside free agents because of where you are. So you have to be sure that the Bam Jimmy duo is still good enough to compete or you say we're not going to give jimmy the extension if he wants to be traded or if next year he opts out and he becomes a free agent fine at least it gives us a you know if we make the trade we get draft picks back we get draft capital back and then we can make a run at somebody else who becomes available because we have more capital or jimmy becomes a jimmy becomes a free agent next year and you have cap space and you pivot and you build your own bam i think this is right now this decision they're going to make this offseason will tell us kind of what direction they're going in which i think probably fans want at this point because it feels like they've been bridging probably two timelines right with the jimmy timeline and the bam timeline it seems like this offseason they're gonna have to pick one i agree uh and i agree with you know everything anthony was was bringing there on the show that there does have to be a decision um i mean i would like to see them try and fight it out with jimmy and and uh, and when i mean that i mean (laughs) not fight it out with him over the money. I wish that they – I, I want to see this thing through with Jimmy Butler on the heat. That's been my opinion of this whole thing. Um, I want to see Jimmy and Bam together do what they have to do because they've gotten so close. I'd really like to see the front office find some way to make a home run swing to give those guys, you know, the actual support that they need. I think that they have tried. I don't – you know, it's not lost to me that, you know, the Kyle Lowry thing salary-wise wasn't not a major swing at this. Um, it just wasn't, it wasn't enough, you know, one year it was close to the one seed. And then, you know, Kyle got old, (laughs) Kyle got old and just didn't work out anymore. But, you know, I think what I mean by that is, you know, can Pat Riley legitimately either land the Orca or give these guys the, the, the exact right pieces that they need to compete and contend. I would like to see that. Um, but if they're not going to do that and, and they really do feel like they have hit their peak with them, I respect it, um, but but I don't think that you can just get here to BAM and say, hey, but, you know, figure it out with what we got. Like, okay, then then have your, have your arsenal of assets that you better get for Jimmy Butler. You better not get Jimmy Butler and give him especially to an East rival. And then all of a sudden you're watching him hoist the Larry O'Brien trophy. You know, you better make sure that your move is going to have you right there and that you have picked your timeline and that this is the the direction you're going to go. So, look, this, is, I think, in a lot of ways is going to be a really fascinating summer. And I think to, to also to Anthony's point about the fans, yeah, I think not only are the fans, are they tired of bridging – the the gap of the two timelines i just think the fans want a little bit of change you know i think if you asked many heat fans last year like what are your favorite parts of last year probably you got the bam and jimmy buzzer beaters but you didn't really get to see tyler you know he was out for half the year i mean easily i think for the best part of everybody's year was watching jovich and jaime um why i think because they're new and you want new and you want to see what your young guys can do. And I think that people will continue to watch it. That's part of the fun of basketball is watching your young guys develop. Um, but if you keep bringing back, you know, the same pieces over and over again, it can be, I think, I think it's just, a, I think people are going to grow a little tired of it, especially knowing that the last two regular seasons have really been just grinders between the health, the clutch losses than last year feeling like you really couldn't hang with elite teams. 
you know, it does feel like the odometer is just getting a, uh, just way, way overdriven on this team in particular. And so they got to do something about that. They got to do something about that. Um, but seeing all these rumors come out about Jimmy with the Warriors and the multiple teams willing to offer maxes and the Sixers already having it out there and leaked that they, they're ready to pounce on Jimmy Butler. You know, the Heat may be in a spot where this might not be – look, it, it, it could go in a quarter direction where Jimmy is going to get the money that he wants, probably be in a place that will still have a decent chance to win. You know, I don't think they're going to trade him to, like, I don't know, Detroit. You know, I don't think that's going to happen. But, you know, they might be in a spot where, hey, maybe they could even create a bidding war for Jimmy Butler and, and get a, you know, get a complete haul for him. Um, and this might, and, and I think that's part of it, too. Like, what if you're in a position where Jimmy Butler actually can fetch you a lot? You know, Jimmy Butler can actually fetch you a, a good amount to reshape your team this could be the last year that happens, right? Because if age is really a question, you know, once those years keep going by, teams may not be willing to pay Jimmy Butler at 36, the max. You know, people may not be paying, you know, if Jimmy, I think part of the reason why he's so adamant about this being the year he gets paid is because he knows this is probably the best position I am to play the accomplishments cards with the Heat. But this is going to be the last year where I can physically you know, maybe be at my best. Although I, you know, I do expect, you know, with a year, you know, with a, with a summer off recovering a little bit more, I, I am hopeful that Jimmy can have a much healthier year next year. If he does come back with the Miami heat, but I, I am understanding that the heat are facing, um, they're facing tough questions. They're facing some tough questions going into the summer for sure. Uh, 